Maybe you can guess what my topic here today is. It's plastics. And like most chemists, I'm infatuated by these things. They have such brilliant chemistry, all the different kinds of plastics. For example, we can drink from a plastic bottle. That plastic can be either polycarbonate or polypropylene. There are significant differences there. We play with uh, plastic toys. Uh, my molecular models are made of plastic. Uh, when I do experiments, I wear plastic safety glasses. I had my blueberries this morning uh, that came out of a plastic box. My Sherlock Holmes pipe is made of plastic. His wasn't. And my little Sherlock Holmes character is made of plastic. The chemicals that I play with come in plastic bottles. I write with plastic pens. I even make nice plastic art forms. Isn't that pretty? All right. But what I want to tell you about here today is where all of this ends up. You know that uh, many of our plastics end up in landfills. Uh, hopefully a lot of them get recycled, but that only happens when we put the right plastic in the recycling bin because they can't all be uh, recycled. In theory they can, but in practice uh, it's a different uh, story. So we have to be careful about recycling. But unfortunately, a lot of these plastics end up in landfills and as garbage in our water systems. We've uh, talked about the large garbage patch in the middle of the uh, Pacific Ocean. Uh, we know that there are plastic bags hanging from trees. Plastic is all over the place. What happens to it? Well, it doesn't degrade easily, but it does degrade. And eventually, because of sunlight and waves and wind, plastics break down into tiny particles we call microplastics. And those break down further into what we call nanoplastics. I can't even show you those, not even through my microscope, which of course is made of plastic, because those little bits are totally invisible. They end up in our water, they end up in our food, and they end up inside of us. Now whether they do anything, that's a different question. Most of them probably come out the way that they went in. But the nanoparticles are small enough to be absorbed and they can even end up in our cells. A lot of research today about just what the consequences are. So what do we do about all of this? Well, I think there are some plastics that we can give up. Uh, we don't need the, the single items the plastic spoons, forks, etc. we can do uh, without uh, those. Uh, we can be more careful about recycling, but I think any advice to give up plastics, as some people say, that's just childish. We could not have our cars, our airplanes, our hospitals could not operate without plastics. They are an essential part of our life, but it's also essential for us to use them properly and wisely. And we constantly have to keep doing our detective work to find out where those nanoplastics end up and whether or not they are going to cause us problems in the future.